All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Who wants to see me tear apart a brand new motor? Stay tuned because you're gonna. Okay, so before we get into today's video, I want to share with you something that uh, I went to the forums on uh, Square Body Goons on Facebook and I made a post about what is the name of the color on the trim of these 77 Chevy trucks. And within minutes I had two or three different people telling me that the color was, but okra was the name of the color, and complete with links to Amazon to find out what it was. So if you are ever in need of some okra paint or black for your 77 Chevy C10, here's the part number and uh, it's 70.913, you can get it on Amazon, just do a search for those numbers. And here's how it turned out. This is the new, this is the old, it is a little bit lighter, but you know what? On this truck, I'm 100% satisfied with the job. I taped it up and I did all the way down, and after it sets up for a few days, I'm gonna go along and just kinda wipe down some of the overlapping that I got because my hands aren't that steady anymore. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, now is a good time to go right here at Old Car Guy and give me a follow because I do post some behind the scenes. You'll know that today or this morning, at the time of this filming anyways, um, I also touched up the badging on the front fender of Dale. So based on some pictures online, I found out that uh, inside the 10, the Scottsdale and part of the sun are black and then I used the okra in the center part there. Didn't turn out too bad. The, the uh, Scottsdale badging is kind of pitted a bit, so you're, you're seeing a little bit of that. Nevertheless, it turned out really good. I'm pretty happy with it, and it just kind of pops a little bit on a uh, otherwise ratty old truck. So having said all that, we're gonna get into the fix on Dale. So a couple of things that I'm gonna show you here as well was we're gonna go through it together and find out some answers to a couple of questions. So in the previous video that we did on Dale, and I'm gonna link that right up here, I asked you guys for some of your opinions and you were great. You were telling me that it could be a valve issue, could be a lifter issue, could be studs pulling out of the head. Uh, there's lots of things that you guys said could have been the problem and we're gonna try and answer as many of those as we can tonight. The first one that we're gonna start with is we're gonna start with the studs pulling out of the head on cylinder number four and the reason why we're starting with cylinder number four is simply because that's the one that's been giving us the issue right from the broken rocker and the broken push rod so let's get the light and shine it down in there and you guys can judge for yourself and tell me what you think so there is the intake and the exhaust stud coming out of the head neither one of them look like they've been pulled out also the threads look good on both of them see if we can get down here a little bit closer so you can see it so I don't know about you but I'm pretty confident that that was not the issue so we'll scratch that one off the list the next suggestion was either a bad valve a carboned valve um, bent valve uh, whatever you guys were saying um, and so in order to prove that we need to do a cylinder leak down test so I've got the tester hooked up I've already done the test to figure out what's going on and I want to share the results with you guys. So without further ado, let me grab the air and I'll show you what's going on. Okay, so on this cylinder leak down test, I do have the rockers off cylinder number four as we just showed you just because I want to make sure those valves are closed. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 100 PSI of pressure in that cylinder and this needle will go up there showing us what the shop air is. This needle should do the exact same thing and come up and hold 100 PSI or pretty darn close. So let's crank the air up and see what's happening with cylinder number four. Well, that doesn't look good, but I think I know the reason why is because the boys turned off the shop air and we're leaking back. Let me go turn the air back on.
That's more like it. So let's turn this back to 100. And there we go. They're both sitting at roughly 100 PSI. And I'm pretty confident now that there's no issues with the valves. So now we're also going to check the push rods, which is number three, and uh, make sure that the A, the one that broke on the rocker is still in good shape, and the one that I replaced on the uh, intake valve is still in good shape too. So let's pull those out. So that one looks good. Well, so the one on my left hand is the exhaust, the one on the right is the intake. Can you see what I see? If you can't see it on camera, this one is bent again. So there's the exhaust rolling pretty good. And there's the intake one not. So now we know at least three things. One that we can do a leak down test and it holds pressure. So nothing wrong with the valves. Two, our head studs aren't pulled out, causing us to have, you know, not, not able to tighten or, or adjust the valve lash properly. Three, that we actually have at least one bent push rod. Well, how does a push rod get bent? Well, usually it's because of resistance. What's the only other equation here that we haven't talked about? Lifters. The lifter snapping that we heard in that previous video. Is atypical of a stuck lifter or a bad lifter. So what we're going to have to do, and that's what we're doing in this episode, is we're taking the intake off. We're going to replace both of the lifters on that cylinder number four, and we'll verify that the uh, lifter that we're taking out in question is bad, the one from the intake valve, as well as we're going to get a scope and we're going to take a look at the camshaft, the new one that we put in when we built this motor, and make sure that there's no scoring, no, no marks, no flat spot, whatever, whatever we're looking for. We want to make sure there's nothing irregular there. Uh, if everything is good, we'll put the new lifters in, put the vehicle back together, put the engine back together, uh, readjust the valves, and hopefully be done with this and be on our way. So um, those of you who are still yelling at your computer screen or your phone or your iPad right now and saying, Jason, you should replace all those rockers while you got it all apart and you should replace all the nuts and you should replace all the push rods with new ones. You're still gonna be yelling at your screen because what I'm gonna about to tell you, you're not gonna like. What I plan on doing, I truly believe that that one broken rocker arm was the root of all this evil do I think that there's a possibility that it could happen again? In the back of my mind, there's a slight, slight chance. And there's a little voice back there just trying to holler for me to hear him saying, replace them all. But at the end of the day, I think it was a one-off thing. Uh, we're gonna put everything back together. We're gonna readjust those valves on this side. We're gonna take a chance. Absolute worst case scenario is it happens again. Possibly do I do more damage? Well, maybe. Uh, maybe we're lucky enough that we can just replace it and be done. If it persists, I will tear it down and I will put all new rockers, all new push rods on, and I may even go with roller rockers this time. So having said all that, we're, we're well 10 minutes into this video. Already. I haven't even done anything. So I'm going to tear into this. I'm not going to go through the whole procedure with you guys uh, on camera. I might break in once in a while um, when we get to the cam. But other than that, I'm going to tear into it, and we'll be back here in just a few minutes. Okay, so it's a few minutes later. Well, it's more than a few minutes later. It's about an hour later. I had a bite to eat, and uh, we're getting ready to pop off the intake, and then we can get a look inside that lifter valley and find out what all the fuss is about. So let's see if we can get that popped off. There we go. Okay, let's pull out the bad one, the suspect one here. Yeah, well, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but check this out. 
she's toast she's crispy critter so again I'm pretty satisfied that the issue we've been having is this guy right here this is the one that's been coming up and beating on that uh, intake valve rocker arm and push rod causing us some noise so there you have it there is our bad lifter let's check the other one and I would say this one same thing I don't think they're supposed to be able to do that all on their own so I think what I'm gonna do is while I'm in here I am gonna check a few of the other ones just randomly just to make sure um, to see how much further we should go or have to go tonight and maybe we luck out and these are the two bad ones and uh, call it quits so just for argument's sake too the bottom of that looks like it's a pretty good shape there's no uh, grinding or no wear let me check the other one that one does have a little bit of a spot on it now I can't feel it with my finger well yes I guess I can feel it a little bit with my fingernail so we're gonna have to get in there and check that uh, camshaft and see what's going on so let's get the equipment ready for that and I'll come right back with you so I'm not sure if this is going to show up very well but there is the exhaust cam lobe looks pretty shiny with no marks and if we come over to the intake it's looking much the same I don't think we have any damage on the cam lobe at all so we're going to call this golden and start reassembly okay so we've checked our cam lifters we've got a new push rod ready to go in we're going to start reassembly on this thing and uh, hopefully have it running by the end of the night and depending on uh, how late it is will depend on whether or not we actually take it for a cruise we'll definitely get it started so i'm going to put everything back together and we'll come back to you on first startup okay so we've got the antifreeze in everything's connected i've got no spare parts left over i do have the uh, cut open valve cover on that uh, passenger side so uh, let me show you so we're getting ready to start it up and we'll be able to adjust those two valves i've double checked triple checked all my connections i think we're good so let's go in and start her up see what it sounds like hopefully it starts Timing might be off a little bit. Got my marks lined up where it was, but we're gonna bring her back just a hair. Squeaky belts, holy. Well, the plus side is that she runs. Back just to here. Come on, you pig. It's almost a two-man job. Anyways, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to call it a night. It is about 9.30. We've got it running. That's a start. We've got to get somebody out here on the throttle as well as somebody doing the timing uh, and getting it started. So uh, I'm going to come back here tomorrow morning when I have a little extra help and we're going to see if we can get this thing buttoned up. But for now, 
we're done for the night and I'll be right back with you. All right guys, it's the next morning and uh, actually it's lunchtime already. Uh, I came in, I fine tuned, I got it timed and we've done a few practice runs and doesn't it work awesome. So we're about ready to go for lunch and uh, give you guys a little kind of a test drive on uh, how well she works and well, we'll go from there. more ticky ticky which is a good thing all kinds of traffic here holy all right here we go some lunch and then we're gonna close out this video guys so there we have it we've taken it for a test drive we've been on its kind of maiden voyage through town and I'm obviously I'm down here at the camper tonight which is about a 18 miles uh, from work didn't hitch a bit works great very responsive and I've even hooked up the vacuum switch for the overdrive which is gonna be a separate video and uh, we've still got a little bit of fine-tuning and adjusting uh, to do on that but nevertheless, we've got Dale back on the road without an issue so far. Um, again, some fine tuning on the timing as well as the carb adjustment. And I'm going to have to leave that to the old man because I don't know much about it. Maybe I'll watch a YouTube video. Maybe somebody out there has a YouTube video on adjusting these Edelbrock carburetors uh, with the air fuel and uh, idle and all that stuff. So, anyways, guys, thank you for sticking through this video. I know it was a little bit of a longer one, but. Um, it's sometimes it's what you got to do to kind of get the point across and get everything done and put it all together so rather than break it up into a two part I just did it all in one and there we have it in fact somebody in my last video was commenting that they wish my videos were a little bit longer because we just get into them and well they're done so there so it's time to close out this video guys uh, stay tuned there's lots more coming we've got some more projects coming up on uh, the uh, Chrysler Cordoba as well as Grandma. Those are coming up in the very near future. I'm actually on the lookout right now for a rear differential uh, track lock for Grandma. So hopefully we can get that, uh, get both of those rear wheels spinning. We're gonna be doing the same thing to Dale here at some point as well. But in the meantime, we're gonna probably take a little bit of a break from doing too many big projects and uh, relax on that. But we do have some other stuff coming for you. So in the meantime, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys, God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.